live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017, brought to you by HGST. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at NAB 2017, 100,000 people. The Las Vegas uh, Convention Center is packed. Uh, and it's everything you could ever want to get involved in video and media, and it's pretty crazy exciting. Hope trying to get the guys from spending all of our budget money next year on new cameras. But we're excited to have Brian Raleigh on. He's a VP post-production and production business intelligence at ABC Studios. Welcome. Thank you, I'm excited to be here as well. Absolutely, so first impressions of the show, you said you haven't been that many times as you walk around, what, what strikes you? Uh, yeah, this is only my, sec my second time here. I will say I've seen plenty of booths that have the words ingestion, transcode, archival, distribution. There certainly is a lot of dist distribution out here at the broadcasting right. uh, but, convention, which makes sense. But you're involved in that pesky little process between what comes off the camera and what goes out to distribution. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> we're prior to broadcast, right? So my world is really production and post-production and, uh, and the production management systems we use within them. Right, so love to hear kind of how's, how's that world evolved? I mean, it used to be you yeah. had an artist on a, on, a, on a machine with local files, doing the editing and all this stuff, and clearly that world is, is, is long, yeah, long gone. Yeah, most of our production and post-production workflow is in you know, the cloud, you know, right. however you want to call it. Um, and very recently what we've done is we've tried to move on from the kind of email, email-based world and saving everything on your desktop-based world. Um, a lot of it revolves around, you know, the, the, push, the push to move off of that revolves around security, right. um, efficiencies, better distribution, better control over who has access to what. Um, so my role is really to introduce uh, digital production management systems, digital daily systems, digital purchase order systems, digital you know, a scheduling systems. Right. Just kind of take us uh, into, into more of like a holistic one-way world that covers both the uh, production side as well as the studio side. And, wh and where would you say you are kind of on that journey? Early, year one is year what one, I would early, say. Year one, yeah, early right. days. So our department is called the Production Business Intelligence Department, but um, that's really, I would say we have more enthusiasm for business intelligence than we do have knowledge of right. business intelligence. Right. So phase one is really getting our systems uh, rolled out, right? To get these digital systems in use with 100% adoption, um, on all of our shows and all of our studio and network users. Um, once, we, once we have that piece done, we can actually start to collect the data uh, and make some, make some use of right, it. Right, right. And, and how has kind of the efficiency and the workflow, I know you're still early days, or yeah. how do you anticipate it really being impacted by moving to more cloud-based systems um, versus you know, kind of local, local on yeah. your hard drive um, so uh, I mean, controls? So, Security is 100 times better than it was before, right? Just because everything is hidden behind a password now. Access is much more controlled. Right. Efficiency has increased many times over as well. I'll say that uh, we project over the course of our first year with these systems, we will have reduced our email count just within the studio by 650,000. Well, who doesn't love that? Right, exactly. <laughs> I keep telling them it's good. Golly. Right. Uh, everything is more searchable now. Right. Um, uh, yeah, higher quality, we're getting things faster. Uh, our PAs are no longer burning thousands of DVDs and distributing them all across town. Um, so it's, it's improved our world in many ways. Right, and how, and how do you kind of boil that ocean? Or is it kind of by department, is it by show, is it you know, one little slice yeah. kind of spread really, really wide? How, took, I mean, that's uh, a big rollout. You guys yeah. are a huge I say huge when, studio. We, when, we st when the department, it used to be called the production technology department, and when it started eight, nine years ago, the approach was really like, let's build everything in-house uh, and, and try to, to piece it out one by one. What we have learned is that doesn't really work, and it was really difficult to get adoption, and it was going to take a huge workforce in order to build what we needed. Right. So we started to go with the best in breed approach with these applications, and what came with them was 24-7 support and kind of white glove training and admin services. Right. So, um, because I, I have a really small centralized team, um, they can focus on just the, the, the training uh, administration, and we have really this third party service team that comes with each one of these uh, production management systems that we use. So right. we've been able to boil the ocean because we have a lot of help. Right, and the other nice thing is be, just because of the nature of, of the studios, teams kind of form around shows, right? So now you can 
onboard a new team around your infrastructure piece. Yeah. They do the show for one season, two seasons, however many seasons. Yeah. And then they go away. Yeah, they, what's they been really good is even though good, right? it's a huge uh, training endeavor for sure with our production teams because we have something like like 8,000 people on our freelance production teams at any time, and they're a transient workforce. They go from studio to studio and show to show. Right. But I think something like 60 to 70% of the people that we hire, we've hired before. Okay. Uh, so the good news is once we've trained them once, there's a good likelihood uh, that we won't need to train them again. Right. And, and so there's kind of the application-centric piece of it, and then yeah. there's kind of the infrastructure uh, piece behind the applications. I mean, good news is you didn't have it eight years ago, but I mean the, the developments on the infrastructure side around storage and bandwidth and, and CPU, huge change yeah. from where it was before. I mean, could yeah. you even have done what you were hoping to do eight years compared to kind of where you are today? No, I don't think the companies just didn't exist at that point. That's right, so the companies weren't there because the technology wasn't there. Right. And now they've both kind of aligned, and aligned at a good time, right? When I think people are ready to hear uh, uh, that, that we need to modernize as a studio. There's so, much, there's so much competition out there that we need to make sure that we're doing things as good or better than everyone else. Right, and you, you said security a bunch of times. Yeah. So was, was the security, was it a security hole? Was it you know, people forgetting their laptop at the coffee shop? Yeah. I mean, what were some of your main security concerns that you've now been yeah. able to address? Um, <laughs> it's interesting, so uh, we're ABC Studios, but we do a lot of co-productions with Marvel Studios. Uh, and Marvel Studios' culture is very security-centric, and because we work so hand-in-hand -hand with them, um, we've been very cognizant of the security abilities of these applications as we bring them in. So I will say, whereas we didn't have any big uh, you know, outbreaks, right? You know, that we didn't have, you know, we had shows like Lost that, were pe that people were really concerned about. Uh, right. Shows, um, scripts getting out, but more recently we haven't had these huge high security titles, but now that Marvel is on board, it's made us very security conscious. Okay, and it's more, it's more early leaks and people getting access to the assets before Yeah, mostly we're worried about scripts. Right, right. Really, mostly scripts, as yeah. opposed to images or uh, uh, kind well, of finished product right, and right. Scripts and rough cuts, right, I would right. say. Right. Okay, so, that, so that's kind of the, that's kind of the bat, the stick. In mm -hmm. terms of a carrot, um, what were some of the benefits that you hope to achieve or you are really starting to achieve on the carrot side of the equation? Well, so we're still in phase one, as, as I said, in, in kind of rolling out right. these applications. Uh, we'll the, let you talk about yeah. vision, Brian. <laughs> yeah. we, we, won't hold, we will not hold you <laughs> yeah, to whatever say you the, say that's being yeah, uh, the, actual the, in production. The, the carrot, so we're called, we're now called production business intelligence, but we don't have much intelligence at this point. So um, now that we're seeing some light at the end of the, on the end of the tunnel in terms of rolling out these systems, um, the hope is, the carrot is, we're going to be able to find some really great business insights from the data we collect. The kinds of questions we want to be able to answer are things like, uh, which, which of our directors that we hire are costing us the most in production staff overtime? Um, when an editor's cut delivers, and it delivers 11 minutes long, um, how does that correlate with the length and complexity of the script? We can start to learn these things, and the hope will be that um, what was going to be a nine-day production schedule, we really can do it in eight. We'll have right. the data, not just anecdotally, but like real data to back that up. Right, and I wonder, and don't tell me if you, if you can't, but within kind of the whole budget of a movie, production, post-production, uh, you know, distribution, promotion, right. what, what pieces is, is post-production. I mean, I just think of the complexity of it. You know, yeah. it, can be, it can be just a sinkhole yeah. if it's not managed well. Yeah, as a part of the production, well, it depends on the show, right? The right, right. complexity, but, you know, kind yeah. of general. The variance of really visual effects, right? Uh, but I would say 10 to 20% of the budget is post-production. Okay. Um, and the systems piece of it is much, much less. Right, you know, one, right. Maybe 1%. Right. So, so you can make a pretty significant impact on yeah. that budget by being more efficient For and, sure. and, and, and leveraging that well, intelligence. Well, the below the line, which is what these systems really do uh, impact, so not just post-production, but production as well as two-thirds of the budget. So absolutely, I mean, that's um, I get many millions of dollars. Right, right. Okay, so as you look forward, have you got any insights that are, that are kind of helping you drive to the next place, or are you just kind of working down a roadmap as, as you look at 2017, I know we're a third of the way through, which I find really hard to believe. Yeah. Well, you know, what's kind of on your agenda for, what's next? Where, I'd say we're, we're, still, we're still working down the roadmap, right? So um, we have, like I said, we have documents figured out, we have uh, digital dailies figured out, we have production uh, purchase orders figured out. Now we're going to start looking at asset management, and we're going to start looking at scheduling um, in hopes that ultimately we can um, 
you know, really, I, I guess the real vision here is that we can, can have kind of a, a production ratio, right? So we can, we can start to rate our productions against each other based on all of these, this information that we have, right. but it requires some additional systems right. first. All right, Brian. Well, I wish you luck. At least you got 650,000 less emails to do. I know, it's a good do. start. I mean, that should free up a ton of time. Yes. That's a great start. All right, he's Brian Raleigh from ABC. I'm Jeff Frick. Again, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, you're watching theCUBE from NAB 2017. Thanks for watching.